Okay, so it is one o'clock in the afternoon. A uh, full fasted morning of the entirety of doing this high fat diet. I've been doing intermittent fasted, like I said, in the full day of eating. Video link below if you haven't seen it. And so this is me. Hydrate, I've had a cup of tea. I have been sat out in the sun whilst doing that, which has kind of got the blood flowing a little bit. Done a little bit of stretching. And after this, I'm gonna go get my carbs in, alongside some fats before going to training. And then hopefully you'll see a difference between then and now. And also hopefully you'll see a difference between now and the previous update. On a morning weight of 178.8 pounds. I am on an even ground, so I'm a little bit lopsided here. Now I'm going to take in carbs, fats, hit the gym. Today I'm going to be hitting up some uh, hamstrings, shoulders and abs. Although if I do a lot of abs, they're going to swell up. So that might be an issue when we compare. And uh, little accessories like forearms and diddly doodle. So pre-workout will be these, which are honey covered cinnamon cashew nuts, 50 grams of those. And a probably a little bit overripe banana, but 20 grams of carbs. And this is the difference that pump, sweat, blood, yeah, makes. Ooh, it is getting a little bit cheeky now. <laughs> No Photoshop necessary, people. Right, so literally just straight back from the gym, just pulled up in the driveway. I tried to keep the air conditioning off whilst I was in the car, so I was trying to keep some fullness looking, and uh, we'll see what the difference is from an hour ago. Again, I didn't really train anything other than shoulders. The rest of it was hamstrings. One thing I have noticed is a definite increase in that dry look. Much more detail in the shoulders, chest. Let me just get it straight, you're not dry. What it means is just that the water in the muscle and not between the muscle and the skin. I think I've noticed things like, like this, being able to see the split. A lot of those fibers in the biceps. I think you can definitely see that the physique tightens up during training when you get that pump you take in some carbs to help fill that glycogen within the muscle helps push it against the skin a little more I didn't take pre-workout I didn't take a pump agent if I do that this would look even crazier like I really do swell up I do really react to kind of that pump that you get in the gym and I look like a bit of a different animal in the gym when the muscle fibers are firing twitching moving that's part of it though isn't it I mean that look that you get in the mirror at the gym you're always gonna be chasing that reflection in the mirror and that's a good thing it's that carrot on a stick the constant drive the constant motivation because i think if you're ever 100 percent satisfied in who you are what you are and what you look like i think you're done because we need that positive criticism of ourselves that what can i be working on? what can be improved let's take that little bit of a weak area and start making it strong and that's the kind of mentality you need to have and that's what's so important as well the uh, lack of bloating is a huge thing so i've definitely found that my my midsection here when i'm waking up all through the day I'm going to say it's feeling less bloated there are still times in and around training before and after where I do kind of feel a little bit like a little heavy here I suppose that tends to be because that's when I'm taking the carbs in so I'm getting used to that fasted state of feeling kind of almost hollow you feel very 
flat, very tight, very pulled in. And uh, that's quite a nice feeling because you're not hungry, you just feel sucked in is the best way I can describe it. And then obviously when you eat a high fat meal, you're not spiking that insulin as your first meal of the day. So it's not, you're not having that big breakfast and then it kind of shutting you down with that big heart carb hit and big insulin spike. And what I found with the changing from that high carb, low fat to a low carb, high fat, I've been able to get my food in a little easier in a more enjoyable fashion. Cost wise, it really isn't that much of an expensive change or change budget wise because you're able to get fats in in smaller volumes which means you're actually not having to make as much food so portion proportion you're actually probably going to be eating less volume to get the same calories in that you would do on, a, on an equivalent calories on a higher carb lower fat diet one to look at in terms of how your energy is differing through the day and what i found through the day is through the first week or so i was super lethargic i think that was because my uh, blood sugar levels my insulin and all that was kind of leveling off and I was I was kind of having a big dip and uh, before it all kind of leveled off back to normal because I was eating such high carbs before I was on 350 to 400 carbs I was taking in around about 150 of those carbs alone just around working out so I do feel that that first week I'm gonna be, I didn't feel full of energy and full of beans I definitely looked a little better but I didn't feel any better I actually felt probably a little bit worse but second week now and third week definitely sleeping heavier and energy levels in the gym are sustained now it's been a little bit tough to really judge it because a lot of my workouts over the last week or two have been quite supersetted quite time uh, restrictive nothing to do with other than the fact that i was just a bit unmotivated about getting into the gym early and so i was getting there with like an hour before it shut so i was having to force workouts into an hour and sometimes i like to do that when i feel like i'm a little bit off track when i feel like i'm i'm a little bit lacking in motivation what i'll do is get myself to a gym when time is not on my side and it makes me move and it makes me work and it makes me not think about being tired it makes me have to get onto the next movement, onto the next set, onto the next exercise. Like I said, I train a lower volume per session, but a higher frequency. So I'll do more body parts in a session. So the overall volume is the same, but I'm spreading it over three body parts instead of one or two, but I'm training each of those body parts at least twice a week. So they're getting hit, if not a little bit more than if you do them on singular body days, but that works on a benefit of growth and maintenance and progression because by hitting the body parts on a more regular basis in a 72 hour period, you are encouraging that protein synthesis and growth within that muscle more frequently, you're stimulating it more often and force the body to want to keep the muscle, keep the way it looks. And by utilizing it more frequently, we are 100% creating that scenario. It's also gonna be joint sparing, it's gonna be central nervous system sparing. More important than anything, it's more fucking interesting. When you get in the gym, you're doing more body parts, you're doing more movements, and you are rotating through faster. So your interest in the sessions becomes greater. And if you're going in and it's say hamstring day, and you fucking hate hamstrings, you're not gonna put your all into that, especially if you're on a day of low motivation. But if you're going in and hamstrings is intertwined with biceps, which you love, I guarantee that you're going to push through that session harder than you would if it was just the other one. Makes sense? I, there's so much I could go on in here, but I don't want to make these videos too long. And we're going to be covering all these things in depth week to week as this goes on with diet to see how I progress and how I change. And I keep saying it over and over again. It's time plus consistency. This is not a quick fix. This is a long-term goal. You know, you can change your body in 12 weeks, it's 100%. If you are dedicated and you stick to it in those 12 weeks, yes, 100%, you will change, you will get better, you will look better, but it's what you do afterwards and what you continue to do after that that's gonna dictate how you look because it's useless looking good for two or three weeks of a 52-week year. That isn't healthy. That's not what we want. We want you to be able to get up every morning, look in that fucking mirror and go, I'm proud of that person looking back at me. I earned what I see in that mirror and I'm not fucking done yet.